Hey, Josh. Hey there. A little quiet today. Honk. Yep. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, um, I will go ahead and get started regardless. So, uh, oh, looks like we're already recording. Uh, so welcome everybody to, I don't know, whatever this is, the fourth meeting of uh, CNCF SIG Contributor Strategy. Um, as always, we are under the CNCF Code of Conduct, so please be excellent to each other. Um, I, we don't have anybody new on this call, so I will skip the introductions um, and move straight into mailing list items per the agenda. Um, so, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. wait, why am I, ugh. actually, let me see if I can share the screen. Sharing on Linux on Zoom? What? Yeah, Zoom's been good about that. That's why, despite all their security issues. It, it's been pretty bad for me the last few uh, the last few meetings with the new Zoom update, or with whatever version I'm on currently. But, okay. Yeah, the, the new one's the one that has like the hella security. Excuse my French recording. Oh, uh, so so you're saying I shouldn't update my Zoom this week? I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to I'm going to roll back my Zoom. Actually, no, no. yeah. The um, okay. Anyway, can you see the mailing list stuff there? Yes. Okay, yep. cool. Um, so, okay. Do, 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 do. So let's see, what do we have here? Um, new meeting. Uh, yeah, new meeting, which is further down on the agenda. So I'm not going to discuss it right now. Um, and, and what do we have since last meeting? Pretty much just the starter pack, yeah? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we have um, a whole bunch. Uh, Paris, actually, do you want to talk about this since this is m mostly your work? Um, no, it's fine. Uh, this is just TLDR, an update. This is pretty much what we gave a TOC update as well. Uh, we had a TOC update uh, on Tuesday. Um, many folks here that, were, that are on the line right now were there, but um, this is just kind of like what we should be using when folks ask us uh what we're, what we're up to um so obviously many of us are in like 45 other communities so um i'm going to get into a good habit of regularly at least once a month doing updates kind of like this uh especially for toc i felt like it was super helpful just for me to include this link to toc kind of thing so um expect more of that uh, and that's really all i wanted to say on this okay um can somebody else take notes on the agenda? Because if I'm screen sharing, I can't really do it. I will. I will. Cool. Um, the um, okay. Uh, that's actually all for mailing list items. Um, uh, so very briefly. Whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. Uh, very briefly um, for uh, governance uh, working group next steps. Um, April's not on this call right now, but. Uh, we're going to have our first meeting of the governance working group um, on Monday, May 11th, uh, in the afternoon Pacific time, um, because right now there are only two members of the working group, and that works for both of us. Um, uh, main thing of this is going to be to kind of organize the working group um, and also start work on our actual stuff, which falls into two main areas. One is uh, preparing our recommendations on governance requirements to go to the TOC who have indicated that they want to increase governance requirements at the various graduation levels. Um, 
uh, and as well, you know, outline all of the things that we need in our guide for helping projects develop governance. Um, uh, so uh, there's an invitation to that on the mailing list. Uh, if anybody is interested in participating in that working group, um, if you know somebody who's not currently in contributor strategy, who you know has an interest in governance, uh, please pass them along. Um, uh, and that's it for governance. Um, I, have a, I have a question. Sure. Um, I think, um, and I just put contributor growth. That's what that was me typing violently. Uh, contributor growth on the agenda. Um, from the contributor growth working group, we're definitely going to have some probably project. Remember that, like that's what the yeah. section is called in the graduate project. Probably going to have some project recommendations that necessarily aren't like uh, governance related. So I feel like, is that okay if we're just like, pushing a TOC multiple recommendations or should we like package them up into a bow and send them together? I don't care either way. I'm just curious as to what your thoughts are. So you're talking about recommendations to the TOC for requirements or something else? Right. So for instance, example, um, all projects have to have a contributing markdown file. Right. Right. So like, I feel like that's something that would come out of like the contributor growth and like some other stuff. Um, so I'm curious as to like, or like, I'm just, I guess, trying to set expectations to TOC to like, should they expect other, um, you know, other requirements changes to come from us? Or is this like it? Um, I, I think we should maybe in that case, bubble up the requirements through this meeting. Okay. Um, so that when more than one working group has separate requirements recommendations at the same time we can send them to the yes. see together agreed okay um and particularly with contributor growth and governance in particular a lot of those recommendations are going to be directly related to each other cool yeah right? no, because I like agree. governance is going to have say the requirement that you have to have um you know that you have to have contributors from more than one company Okay. But yeah, okay. we're relying on contributor growth to say, how do you get contributors from more than one company, right? Cool. The, um, so really, we're just iterating here live. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Yep. That, so, that's awesome. I just wanted to make sure this wasn't like the, the packaged bow thing, you know, that we're like telling COC, this is it kind of thing. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Um, Next. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the things I haven't worked out and that we'll be discussing on Monday and that sort of thing is... How we do this thing is because, you know, the TOC will have some moving set of standards for projects. Yep. yep. And we're basically making change recommendations to those, but their documents are also changing in the process. Haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, the, um, uh, um, because of course their stuff is going to be in a different repository. Um, the, um, and I really do not want to use GitHub sub repository things please um, no please no because, yeah, <laughs> i really i have i've had some nightmarish personal experiences with that so no thanks yeah. um the um okay uh so then on to maintainer circle readme um so let me actually bring that up huh i'm in the middle of getting the link as well, by the way. So. Okay, that's presumably an open PR? Yep. Yep. Um, and this definitely needs uh, Steven's review as co-partier. And uh, I wanted to get other takes as well. Uh, this is literally the skeleton, right? So I feel like a lot of this stuff, especially planning, I would like to come from other main <coughs> that join us to tell, you know, to tell us how they would like to do this. So I feel like from a skeleton perspective, um, this is what I was thinking. So obviously there's a ton of to-dos and cadence meetings. Uh, <laughs> Again, I felt like that's from a me wanting to take a pulse from the people that are interested in this, right? Instead of us just like making a thing. So 
Um, Stephen, I don't, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, by the way. I don't, I don't know if you've had time to review. So, uh, yeah, um, I haven't had time to review. We've uh, basically just putting the SIG release uh, uh, 119 schedule things to bed. Um, so I'm freeing up now. Um, but yeah, I'll get to review this soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Yeah. So anyway, that's the, that's just a TLDR of what's in here, which is our goals, what we're trying to define as a maintainer. And again, that's a, uh, a wider net of contributor than what the CNCF technically describes as maintainer for purposes of TOC election. Um, and we can argue about that at another time, side, you know, side, side argue. <laughs> um, but for the purpose of this, um, casting a wider net for people who make like official reviews uh, and who are building that trust uh, within their projects and really talking about project structure and organization and things like that. So uh, <clears throat> that's it. So it sounds like the next step is to contact a bunch of maintainers of CNCF yep. projects. Yep, and that's on, and, on, and I've got that on the agenda. That's honestly, okay. I feel like I, I, we, us should be like, have some kind of nice email uh, that gets sent to all the project maintainers and introduces us, says, hey, look at this, we're planning this thing. I included the link in the, um, in the agenda to the HackMD as well. Mm -hmm. I think I did. It's just, um, and that's just the skeleton of what I'm thinking about. Um, so it's just us coming out of the gate saying, hey, we're doing this thing. We'd love to have you. Uh, um, also adding in like a survey and a focus group option, which um, I started a GitHub issue about as well. So we can really start to get some information back from other projects as to like even what's working for them because we want to collect that information too. Um, so that's kind of where I feel like we should go as far as next steps for maintainer circle, <clears throat> excuse sure. me, maintainer circle as well as some other things. Okay. Anything else on that? No, no, just reviews. Okay. And I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention that, um, I feel like we're in a good spot there. Cool. Um, speaking of good spots, um, apparently, Contributor growth working group is started launching something. Um, I guess we will wait for Carolyn to say something on Slack or the mailing list. Yeah, I put that um, in there. I think there was just um, there was just like some small things, but I say it's ready to go because it's pretty much ready to go. So um, we'll also include that oh. on the mailing list too. Actually, here's an important thing: the yeah. PR is not merged. Yeah, no, um, I know. That's why I said it's almost ready to go. It's got, it's got a couple of small things, um, but I still wanted to put it on there. Okay, does it still have a couple of small things? Uh, I, as far yeah. as I can tell, the only thing we're waiting on is Carolyn wanted Karen Chu to weigh in. Yeah. And she has not. Yep. Um, the... Um, Because otherwise, I mean, there aren't there aren't any actual like you know line item comments or anything that are unaddressed. So, um, well, I think her like Karen's re um, response back yeah. to Carolyn is what I'm talking about. It was kind of yeah, like okay. a small item that needs to be addressed. Okay. But yeah, no, we're we're pretty much ready to go after that. So uh, that's why I'm like we're at this like good state where we we can have like a nice email to project maintainers once they get some of these things merged. Okay. Okay, next up, open-ended questions. This is like one of yours, Paris. Um, do other projects have a contributor experience community group, something similar? Um, I can tell you off the top of my head that Prometheus does not. I don't know of any. I was just curious. Yeah. GRPC doesn't. I bet Helm does. I don't know. I'll have to look. Um, I feel like I mean, they have a like they have a the, like a dedicated community manager. Um, Are you looking for just CNCF projects or? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Jo- in this case, just CNCF projects. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, that was just another friendly question. Um, okay. Uh, oh, okay. There we go. There's your draft email. So this is to contact the maintainers, presumably. Yep. yep. Cool. Um, before that loads, it looks like skeleton for yeah. the time. So. Yes. And so also next, the next time we meet is technically our fourth Thursday, which we've designated that would be cool for them to come uh, instead of them coming to like a meta planning meeting, kind of like this one. So um, also introducing that concept to them as well. Okay, I have to admit I'm confused about fourth Thursday because it'll actually be the third week of the month. Time has no meaning anymore. Yeah, I know. I was literally, you took the word out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> so it's really the 16th Thursday of March, is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We were supposed to meet on the 2nd and the 4th. I did the emoji thing. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we just make it the 1st and the 3rd and... Call it yeah. Event. Yeah. Wait, well, if we're meeting, the problem is that if we're meeting every two weeks, yes, rather right, than twice right. a month, it's always going to then move. There's going to be a, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, um, so. So, so what are we saying? We're, we're saying then come to the last meet. Wait. Come, come, we're saying come, well, uh, we'd have to do one of two things, like change the calendar invites, right? To say there should be like two separate ones where. One is the planning meeting. One is like the SIG planning meeting that you're welcome to come to. Um, but the, the, the second one for the month, which is the third or the fourth Thursday, is the AMA maintainer circle shindig. And would it really be a problem if they came to all the meetings? meeting and we had a designated thing at, in the agenda every time that said AMA and then obviously meta planning or something like that. Um, yeah, not at all. I, I think that um, I think I was just for- concerned about just like opening up a gate and it's just like ah, everybody. I uh, think if we keep it structured and well time bounded then it should be fine. Um, but I agree that that like <laughs> like having people descend on the meeting without having um, like clear time bounds for things would be, would be problematic. Yeah. I mean, I'm open, yeah. so I'm open to that and just keeping it simple and saying, come to a meeting, period. I mean, it would mean that we would need to get all of our other business out of the way Close between out. 1030 yeah. and 11, which I don't think is necessarily impossible. Um, the... Um, and would only be able to spill over if there weren't any um, visitors joining us. But again, assuming I think that's that acceptable. I think assuming that's acceptable. that you're on Pacific time. Hmm? I said assuming that you're on U.S. Pacific time. I'm, I'm in Eastern and Ehor is... Oh, yeah, that's true. So. The, um, well, in the first half hour of the meeting, yeah. we would have to get all of our stuff done. The, um, which also brings up something for maintainer participation that um, we can start out this way, but eventually you're gonna need to move that around the clock because for maintainers who are in China or um, Finland, um, the 11 a.m. Pacific is a very bad time. I really hate time zones. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 11 a.m. Pacific is not a bedtime for Finland, if you're curious. Really? Okay. I thought, it's the I same time like... as Ukraine, and it's not terribly bad here in Ukraine. What, so what time is it? Uh, it's 9 p.m. Okay. I mean, like, it's not so good, but not so terrible as 2 a.m., for example. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. I think we do actually. Yeah, I think we do have a little bit of an issue there with how many maintainers we do have elsewhere. Well, maybe it would make sense to get a sense for who all maintainer wise is interested oh. in taking yeah. part and okay. then scheduling around that because yeah, let's add that. I'll add that to as the uh, you know representative for a project that has some seriously grumpy maintainers. Yeah. Um, not every maintainer is going to want to get involved. So yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I I get that too, and that's totally fine. So <laughs> I, I think that like I mean, because we are technically asking them for other things for the maintainer circle, so that's I think a good ask too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of, it's almost like creating a little working group of like, um, sorry, I made the mistake of looking at the news. Um, it's almost like, you know, a little working group. So you kind of want to figure out who's going to be in the group before you, you know, determine when's best for them to meet. Yeah. So it sounds like for interested people that we want to actually direct them to a form or something where we can ask them, you know, name project time zone. Oh, and then here, I also want to get your advice on, hold on, I'm getting the link. Sorry for the pause. Um, here it is. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Chat. I'll also put it on the agenda. How to end the hack. Um, this is the issue I opened for the survey slash focus group. And what I mean by that is obviously include a form. It'll say it's under 10 minutes, hopefully. Um, and then if you have survey fatigue, and would rather have us come to you, I will. Like, I will, I mean, I'll personally say that, that's fine. Like I know, and I know that like 45 groups aren't going to say that, like I just know. So um, if they would rather talk about it, sure, I'll come for 15 minutes and we can talk about it uh, if they have survey fatigue. So, um, but I wanna know from the other working groups, specifically governance, what are things that you want to know from some of these other projects? And again, it doesn't necessarily mean bad things. It can mean good things. So you can like compile best practices or whatever. Um, but this is also especially relevant for contributor growth uh, and maintainer circle and things like that. So trying to keep the survey as light as possible. So think of like some umbrella questions that would benefit you. Uh, I already put like some general um, on there. So again, I'm trying to keep this as light as possible. Also build some trust um, so that people can see kind of like what we're trying to do uh, through the questions that we're asking. So. Okay, let me add that to our agenda for Monday. Yep. Okay. I will say the grumpy maintainers are just going to tell you to read the documentation. <laughs> and that's it too. The, um, which means that maybe we should just ask questions about where the documentation is. <laughs> just have questions where people can put links. The, um, what, what I really love about the whole RTFM thing is that I will tell you 80% of the projects where a maintainer has told me RTFM the manual did not in fact exist. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, and that's why, and that's another, that's why I'm saying some of the questions are like, so what, you know, what works for you? Like, mm -hmm. you know, sure. Yeah. I've got, you know, we've got plenty of docs on things that don't work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it also gives you a chance to kind of figure out like, if someone fills out the form saying, well, this is how we make decisions. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. Cause that's not what your documentation says. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a good opportunity to identify those things. Yeah. I mean, it, it gives you an idea of like general, general maintainer personas as well when you're dealing with the projects. So 
I don't know if that's useful information to have in the pocket. Yeah, I guess I have to I have to do some hard thinking about how we make questions that are general enough that all projects could potentially answer them, but still get useful information out of. It's a little bit challenging because projects can have some pretty, you know, some of them are going to have documentation for governance and some will not. Um, you know, I, uh, some of them are going to be like, oh, we only do the code type projects and others are going to be more um, holistic. Agreed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that honestly that to me is also going to paint the story right like paint the picture of wow like everybody does do something different yeah it's just if i start with just sort of a free form blank like how do you make decisions then for example some projects you know whoever fills it out may answer it on the basis of oh this is how we review code does everyone use owner's files? Not talk about any other kind of decisions. Does everyone in CNCF use owner's files or do they some use code owners or? It depends, but they're all listed on the public CNCF maintainer stack. Cool. Yep. I'm just curious. Yeah, some people have like a uh, maintainer or stat MD or something like that mm -hmm. instead. They're not necessarily using it for code ownership, but for project ownership. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that with a couple the other day as well. But, okay. All right, um, so I'm gonna wait for uh, the governance meeting then before shipping any kind of email. Um, but I would like to, for as far as like where we are, I mean, we should definitely at least give a week's notice to invite them to the next meeting. So I'm thinking we should definitely try to mail something off by mid next week. Um, so is that, ever, is that like a cool deadline with everybody as far as getting this out? Sure. Whatever you want, Paris. <laughs> um, the, um, Although, well, no, I guess we don't need an actual, we, we're doing the, is the email going to have a link to the survey? It should. So that's why I'm okay. saying, I'm obviously. So, gonna right. So then there's going to be the question of how long it's going to take to physically set up the survey. Because yeah, presumably good. we need to use CNCF survey monkey. Yeah. And there's always some hurdles for that just because of the restrictive access to the account. Um, Could you just use a Google form or does it have to be? Not if we want to potentially include Chinese containers. China, yeah. Mm, right, okay. The, um, a constant annoyance. Yeah, no, and, and it's my bias to gRPC doesn't have any, so that's why I it escapes me. Sorry. Yeah, it's just, I mean, for some of them, like etcd, for example. Absolutely. Uh, both of the yeah. lead maintainers are Chinese, so. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, um, yeah, and last I checked, this may have changed, but last I checked, um, the CNCF survey monkey, there's only two people can log into it, which always creates a bit of a delay to get things created. Is it, uh, Amy, is it possible to, uh, she's gone. <laughs> I was well, say, I mean, I'm, I'm still here, you can ask me. Yeah, oh, right, yes, free. awesome. But, but I'm more than in one minute, so be fast. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the same way we have the, the, the Kubernetes kind of like shared account, is it possible to carve one out for uh, contributor strategy? Like, I feel like this is not the only uh, way to be doing a survey. Uh, probably we'll have to create a, a different account just for the community purposes. Because uh, we use the uh, the CNCF account for all the CNCF related surveys. Right. Yeah, that's what uh, I mean. So, like, if we if we're kind of segmented, then we then there are less issues with giving us access to it. Um, I think it's possible, but it's better to ask Amy, who yeah, have okay. left. And I'm leaving <laughs> now as well. So, okay. See you later. Bye. <laughs> later.
Good night. So, <laughs> okay. Survey the Monkey's end. free. And like, why I don't we just legal. create our own? Say it one more time. I think it's the legal terms that like Linux Foundation puts in there. Well, I mean, you yeah. could just create an account and then like they could pay us back, but whatever. Yeah. I'm being too simplistic, I guess. Oh, hey, April. Do they have free accounts? They do. You don't get all the functionality, um, but we don't unless need you're doing a lot of like conditional questions. Um, but uh, okay. yeah, that's just my thought would be like spin up your own and. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that they had free accounts, in which case, yes, that we could totally do that if the CNCF will let us do that. So, um, which would be easier, right? Because also, I mean, I will tell you, as somebody who has designed some of the CNCF surveys, like actually done the physical design of it, um, <laughs> well, this is on recording. The, um, the, the only having two accounts that can log into SurveyMonkey is a pain yeah. for everyone. Uh -huh. I mean, and it totally makes sense given the fact that they use it for other stuff that shouldn't be seen by the broader community. So um, I think it totally makes sense to just have one for like the assorted working groups or just create one for the specific working group or say, yeah. sorry. I, if it's a free account, I don't see why we wouldn't have our own. So let's, I'll find out from Amy whether or not there's any, any blockers to us just using a free account for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would I would check in to see if they already have a team, so maybe they have an account, but it's a team account, and they can chart mm -hmm. off like sub accounts or something like that. Like I'm not sure exactly what the the Survey Monkey structure is, but um, they there aren't, uh, or at least the last time I touched CNCF Survey Monkey, which was about three, actually longer than that, like November, mm -hmm. um, there were not teams and that sort of thing. Survey monkeys for their paid accounts, they have a pretty steep tier structure. And and CNCF is not at the upper tiers. Okay. Yeah, it's gotcha. so that's a business plan and then there's a personal plan. They bill per user. So they yeah. don't have it kind of like Zoom where you can create sub stuff. Yeah, because I know for the, the Kubernetes one we just have a single user. Yeah. Yeah. And way. one one good thing is that it's monthly, so like you could always spin it up scale for up, a month. Scale down, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Scale to zero, Survey Monkey. <laughs> the um, okay. Oh, that was all I had for today. What did y'all want to talk about? Um, I'd like to actually just take a quick look at issues to make sure that we don't have anything pending that we need the full meeting. And anything anything that's stuck that we need this meeting to move along. I did want to actually talk about something that came up in the TOC. Um, okay. So it seems like the other some of the other SIGs do this approach where they look at projects when they come in and things like that and I that's why I was pinging Jared um offline because I know he works with a ton of sandbox projects and stuff like that and I was like I wonder if like every meeting here we should talk about some of the specific projects that are coming in um and see like kind of a consultative approach that we could give to them, sort of like what the other SIGs are doing at the TOC level. Um, the, um, so I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, careful I'm, to go, go for it, Josh. I was gonna say, I'm reluctant to embrace that because I can tell you that certain SIGs and CNCF members would be happy to offload a lot of work onto us. And right now we don't actually have a lot of volunteers in the SIG. Okay. Um, the, um, I mean, so far I've kept all of our language in terms of recommendations and stuff in that we are actually providing recommendations to the COC, the TOC, like, like what we have in our initial readme and stuff is that we're providing recommendations to the other SIGs in the TOC um, and only directly getting involved in reviewing stuff on request. Um, the, um, 
Um, and also the sandbox procedure is going to be changing pretty soon. Yeah, so I would I would say um, the reverse, I guess. Um, or, <laughs> no, sorry, no, I've, not, exactly what Josh said. Um, <laughs> I, I would be relu reluctant to open up that possibility. Um, I think that, yeah, exactly what you said. <laughs> People are going to be willing to, to offload that work. Um, I think what we should do is maybe a readout of what has been like, what's new with the TOC kind of situation, right? Where we understand what's been floating around the mailing list yeah. and provide recommendations based on that stuff. Okay. That's feasible, yeah. Yeah, we just need, I feel like need a TOC like connection now. Cause now we're past this like meta stage. So like the last update I gave this week in TOC was like, all right, we're off. And so now I'm just like, all right, now we need to, I guess, make those connections with TOC um, in some way. So I guess we'll also have the governance requirements and things like that. So, all right. Yeah, I mean, they also want when, so the other thing that's actually been informally requested, and I'm not sure who this would fall under is a review of the non-governance project maturity requirements. Right, well, that's um, like contributor growth stuff. Yeah, that's I was going to say that may be a contributor growth. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's right, and that's where I, that's where I was going with the when I asked earlier about the like, should we all you know package this up as our um, like our one shot of you know recommendations, or are we or we're just going to constantly iterate? We're just constantly pushing recommendations to them, kind of thing. I would expect us to do that for at least the next year okay. um, because um, there isn't a lot of precedent even outside the CNCF for this sort of thing. Um, and as a result, what will happen is we'll make some recommendations. Um, you know, they will adopt some or all of those recommendations. Um, projects will get reviewed, that sort of thing. Um, either there will be, you know, an open question for, with, for about a project where it's really not clear, um, or alternatively, um, the you know CNCF and TOC will decide that they want to change things, right? Like maybe they'll decide, hey, sandbox incubating and graduated isn't enough. We want to have another tier. Um, at which point we need to prepare a whole nother set of recommendations. Um. I have to, yes, I agree. <laughs> I said, I'm going to drop for the SIG architecture meeting uh, later, y'all. See okay. you. Hi. 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 <laughs> y'all can have like a little mini governance meeting now. Yeah. Bye. Hey. No, sorry. Right, except we have it scheduled for Monday. Um, yeah, and, Paris. Uh, I want to, uh, yeah. And can we, um, I don't. Can we think about your survey questions? Come on. <sighs> it's not those are those are you hard. are so demanding <laughs> gosh look at my gray y'all yeah it's getting there okay you need some coloring <laughs> conditioner josh is I, like i don't want to care about <laughs> yeah and the, the um and and yeah and i am so far ahead in the graying department <laughs> Yeah, but you do it well, you know. Well, it's, it's turning white, which I'm thankful for, because if it had turned medium gray, I think I would have needed to cut my hair short. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think long hair looks terrible if it's medium gray. Okay. Hello to whoever watches these meetings. Hello out there. The, um... <laughs> so. Contributor Try. strategy for hair color. Indeed. Let's talk about the right shade of Kubernetes blue. We're um, friends. Oh, we're friends. You know. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, we talked TRPC about... green. Sorry. Right, we talked about spinning off a hair color W working group in Kubernetes from SIG Sig Beard. fashion. No, we, we, should, we need a SIG fashion for real. Yeah. <laughs> GRPC, for GRPC, we briefly had like a working group for nail polish colors because we were looking for like the perfect grpc teal shade so yeah these are important things that go on yes we should we should list this under swag best practices 
<laughs> not that we'll ever be in a place to give well, anyone swag ever again. But yeah, yeah I was going to say, right, if if we, you know, if KubeCon Boston happens, I really do want to get some fake beards for Sigbeard. Yeah. <laughs> Because we don't want we don't want membership mask. we don't want membership to be restricted just to people with natural beards. That's not fair. Well, that could be the mask. Like you could get, you know. Oh my god! What if somebody does not have a hipster oh, beard sure. yeah. respirator by now? That's got to happen.